Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, a special edition of our Power Up. Uh, it is Saturday, uh, and we uh, typically aren't meeting together on Saturday. Uh, typically have uh, other things going on. Uh, and when we started our Power Up, actually, uh, what's that now? Three years ago now. It's, maybe it's been three, maybe two, I don't remember. Uh, but when we started it, uh, we uh, we had our power up Monday uh, through Saturday uh, and uh, then even into Sunday because of the uh, COVID shutdown and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, we were meeting together every day. Uh, and so uh, that was a great start to what we've got going here in regards to our power up. But uh, as we kind of moved out of COVID and that, it was important for us to, I think, uh, uh, have a day off from uh, uh, from not from the word of God, but not just uh, just to uh, free up the morning a little bit. And so we haven't had a Saturday power up uh, in a long time. But it's good to be with you uh, today. Uh, and I'm looking forward to kind of uh, once again uh, uh, reviewing the events that are surrounding Easter, reading from Scripture, uh, the events surrounding the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so uh, thank you so much for being on with me today, this morning. We've got a busy day today as we prepare for uh, Easter Sunday uh, and look forward to, to just the excitement of the day uh, and then also look forward to tomorrow uh, celebrating uh, Christ's death his burial, and his resurrection. Uh, I, I heard this yesterday or read this yesterday. I don't remember, uh, but and I'm going to totally get it wrong. Uh, they were talking about uh, about God, and uh, they were mentioning the, the resurrection. Uh, and uh, God has, uh, has lived every day. Uh, at, you know, life for God is the norm. Uh, but a God that dies is significant uh, because God just doesn't die. Uh, but we know that Jesus did die, uh, and that's significant for our salvation because, as we mentioned yesterday, the sacrifice that was made on the cross of Calvary for my sin and for yours. Uh, and, uh, and for salvation, we needed a blood sacrifice. There had to be a payment that was made for our sin. There had to be. Uh, and then uh, we know that, yes, Jesus died. Uh, he was buried. He rose again. And uh, the resurrection gives us the hope of eternal life. Uh, and so Jesus' death gives us salvation uh, from our sin. The payment's been made. The risen Savior gives us the hope uh, of life after uh, this life. And that's that's the significance uh, of this weekend. And man, what a weekend it is. Now, or, or it will be, has been, and uh, currently is. Now let's look, we're in Matthew, we're gonna look at Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27, and join me in verse number 57, okay? Matthew 27. Uh, and verse number 57 it says when the even so actually let's go back a little bit so we know that Jesus has died uh, we even looked yesterday at the uh, the Roman soldier who said truly this was the son of God after Jesus had died in all of the events uh, we look at verse number 57 now this is following Jesus death it says when the even was come there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary, Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. So we've got Joseph of Arimathea taking the body of Jesus and burying it in his own tomb. Uh, now, this, this uh, thought here, this account of Joseph of Arimathea uh, getting his tomb, that, this is a big uh, to-do for Joseph. 
uh, and Joseph had, with his own money, had purchased this uh, this tomb, <coughs> had probably had uh, people uh, 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 take the insides of this rock out, bore the hole, and uh, took the insides out, and had created this tomb for himself, uh, and uh, kind of a, a picture, if you will, of of our life and and, and who we who we live for. We live for ourselves, and uh, each day is, is, is for the betterment of ourselves. And, uh, and uh, I know that, that pride can, uh, can get in there and we can live for ourselves in a negative way, but man, we look out for ourselves. And Joseph was looking out for himself, his end of life, being prepared for uh, the day that he died. Jesus dies, and what does he do? Joseph gives of that which he has. Joseph gives of that which he has paid for, that which he has worked so hard for, he gives so that Jesus' body may be laid there in that tomb. And I want to encourage you, uh, even on this Easter weekend, uh, man, what is it that you have given uh, back to the Lord? Or, or let's say it this way, what are you holding back uh, from Jesus Christ? What are you holding back that Jesus uh, requests of you? Joseph of Arimathea gave his tomb, uh, gave what he had uh, for the Lord's use. Let's give of ourselves back to the Lord for what God has for us. And let me remind you of this, and I know I say this often, what God has for you, we can't even imagine. God has something great, has something tremendous for us, and I would encourage you, hey, don't hold back. Give what you have to the Lord. And I'm not talking just, when we think of giving, we think a lot of money, finances, all of that, okay? But I, I'm saying uh, I'm more than that. God desires that we give of ourselves, give of who we are, uh, uh, commit to the Lord. Uh, don't allow sin to have free reign in your life. Give that area of life over to him and allow him to do something great in you and through you. Uh, and I'm telling you, God's plan for your life is greater than, than you or I can imagine. Now, uh, we see that here. Joseph of Arimathea giving uh, of his tomb for Jesus' body to be laid into. Now, let's continue. Matthew 27, let's look at verse number 62. Matthew 27 and verse 62. Now, the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate. So that night, the night of Jesus' death, okay, uh, his body's taken down off the cross. Joseph is given, is given permission to dress the body, take care of the body, uh, and put it in a tomb. The next day, okay, that follow, we have these religious leaders gathering together uh, to talk with Pilate. And he says in verse number 63, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again, okay? And that's pretty significant. We don't have time to, uh, to go into all of that. We may mention this tomorrow morning uh, during our service, uh, how these religious leaders uh, are, are somewhat scared uh, of what Jesus said about rising from the dead, okay? And we'll look at this uh, maybe uh, uh, Sunday a little bit, but... Uh, this is pretty significant. They had brought false accusers in saying that Jesus had said that he would tear down the temple, the physical temple, when Jesus was referring to his body, that his body would be broken down, uh, that he would die, and that he would rise again. And so we see even the false witnesses that were brought forth against Jesus in his trials. But but we don't, wanna, uh, don't have time to delve into that too much today. But he said, after three days, uh, I will rise again, verse number 63. Now verse number 64. It says, command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he has risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. And so they want to put a guard at the tomb because they're afraid, uh, yes, that Jesus has said that he would rise from the dead, but they're afraid that the disciples will come and steal G Jesus' body and declare that he has risen from the dead. And so these these Pharisees are pretty paranoid here, uh, and, and they don't want 
the message of that risen Savior getting out, no matter how it, how they believe it's going to happen. And so they said, we need those guards at the tomb. Verse number 65, Pilate said unto them, ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as ye can. And so uh, they state, Pilate says, okay, guys, you have your wishes, uh, go ahead, we'll have the guard, make it uh, sure, make sure the tomb is sealed uh, so that nobody can get in, uh, and we want to just be done with this. Verse number 66, so they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. And so the scene is set, okay? He's been mar been buried. Uh, they've come in, they've prepared. Uh, the tomb Joseph has. They've set the guard at the tomb, uh, and now uh, the day is set. Excuse me. <laughs> the scene is set for the the following morning. It's set for Jesus to rise. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. I am so sorry about that, man. Uh, and and so we see now that 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 the morning is coming. We know that Jesus is going to rise from the dead. And we'll look at this tomorrow morning, Sunday morning. We'll look at this tomorrow at 830. So I would encourage you, as we look to uh, to the end of the Sabbath, that Saturday, we look forward to that Sunday, Jesus rising from the dead. Uh, and let's uh, tune in tomorrow morning at 830 as we review that together, the fact that we serve a risen Savior. Now, let me greet those who are watching live here. Once again, thank you for being on uh, and on for this special power up. We normally meet just Monday through Friday at 830. Uh, but for this weekend, I thought we would jump in together uh, on a Saturday live. And so let's greet those who are watching live uh, or those who have commented live. Be sure and share so that others can uh, can review our power up throughout the day. Jody, good morning to you. Thank you for watching uh, from Montana. Ingrid, good morning to you. Have a great day. Love you. We've got a busy day today. David, good morning to you as well. Paula, good morning and thank you for being on. Charlie and Marsha, have a great day today. Uh, Brian and Cindy, also thank you for watching as well. Uh, Danielle, Katsakaris family, potentially. Uh, good morning to you. Greetings to you in Arkansas. Hope that you guys are well. It's good to have you on uh, live today. Now, really quick, let me give you a quick rundown of the day. Uh, listen, 10 o'clock, uh, our choir's meeting together to practice, uh, to go through the program one more time. Uh, before Sunday. Also at 10 o'clock, we have some people coming. They're going to fill Easter eggs and prepare for our Easter egg hunt on Saturday. Uh, so if you can come out uh, or if you want to come out and help fill some Easter eggs and get some things ready uh, for tomorrow, uh, would love to have you. That'll be at 10 o'clock. We'll have lunch probably about 1130, maybe noon. Uh, and so we'll be getting some of my favorite, some Little Caesars pizza. Uh, and so uh, we'll have that at about 1130 noon today. Following that at about one o'clock, we're going to go out into our community and pass out some Easter invitations. Uh, and we're just going to hang them on people's doors and, and connect with people any way that we can. And I know it's going to be a little chilly. It actually, uh, you can't see it behind me, but it just started snowing. It's going to snow for the next, uh, they say, for the next hour or two. Uh, that's going to warm up to maybe 40 or so. And so dress warm, dress appropriately as we head out into our community. Thank you so much for all that you do for the ministry. Uh, and we look forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow, a special day. Beginning 9 o'clock, we'll have coffee and donuts from 9 to about 10. Uh, so come on in. Actually, we're going to go 9 to 945. Uh, and then at 10 o'clock, we have our morning service, uh, our service for the day, our Easter celebration. Uh, and then following that service, we'll have our Easter egg hunt. We'll have a photo booth for family pictures. All that good stuff. We'll love to see you here. Be sure to invite somebody to join you for services tomorrow. All right, Lord bless you all. Have a great day, everybody. And we'll touch base again tomorrow at 830. And then don't forget our service tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Lord bless you all. Have a great day, everybody. And we'll see you uh, very soon.